online worship. This should be our last online worship, we hope. Uh, this is the second Sunday after Epiphany, and we're so glad that you're tuning in with us, whether it's on Sunday morning or at your leisure. We're grateful that you're here. And just to clarify, and just to clarify, it's not our last online worship because we're going to be online every Sunday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so yes. it's just our last. No one is here. <laughs> online worship. <laughs> Teach me not to ad lib. <laughs> Patty has a better announcement about that. Yes, I want to tell you about uh, the service. We're going to be um, coming in person starting next Sunday, January 24th. And the service times will be 8.30 and pay attention, 10 o'clock. We're going to be using our summer schedule. And it will be the 10 o'clock service that will be live streamed on Facebook. You will be getting an email, and it will also be posted on Facebook this coming week, the information that you need to know, both as a reminder of the times, but also um, a link to the Sign Up Genius. So uh, like last time, if you have any problems with Sign Up Genius, you can call me, text me, email me, and I can sign you up. And if you don't know to the last minute uh, that you're able to come, please come anyway. Um, I when we got together before, we always seemed to have a few extra chairs, and we would really, if you feel comfortable, be worshiping with us in person. So when you come, um, wear a mask and um, also socially distance. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you. And how fun for you. You got to see Patty in her, you know, little control center environment there, and we got Bruce behind the camera. So. Anyway, um, hope, hope that you can join us uh, either in person or online. Um, I'm going to tell you about a, a bunch of educational opportunities, uh, and uh, the first one's for adults, and that is uh, we've got the TV series The Chosen. There are eight episodes in the first season, and so we're going to have a, a conversation about each of those uh, episodes um, on Wednesday nights starting this Wednesday. 6.30 p.m. each Wednesday night, we'll have a Zoom conversation. Won't be in person. Uh, the Zoom link you'll find in an email. You'll also find on Facebook. Um, so this is uh, the story of, of Jesus' life and ministry. Um, it's had quite a bit of acclaim. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see what we think about it. Uh, there is a discussion uh, sheet with some questions and some Bible verses to read if you want to augment that. So, and some instructions on how you can see it. It's free, um, and there are ways that you can, you can connect to this uh, series. So, hope you can join us uh, Wednesday for that. That's for the adults, now for the kids. Um, Lori Dingman has, has a few things uh, kind of up her sleeves, and the first thing is for kindergartner through, uh, kindergarten through third grade, Today, if you happen to be watching this and it's before 3 p.m., uh, they're all meeting down at the Sauk Rapids Municipal Park at 3 o'clock today for about 45 minutes of just some outdoor fun um, and faith building. And so we, we hope uh, parents can stay. If you bring your kids down there, then stay and be a part of it. Um, but that's at 3 o'clock today. So hope you can join us for that. Um, this next Wednesday, uh, we're going to begin our, our in-person confirmation classes again. And so our, just a reminder for our seventh graders, they'll be having a trek this Wednesday at 615. Um, and then the following Wednesday, the 27th of January, uh, we have Fire and Ice being kicked off, and that's for our fourth through sixth grade. Uh, and they're going to be uh, going to three different stations outside. We're going to have a bonfire. We're going to have just a whole lot of fun. Um, and so dress accordingly. It's at 530 on the 27th, Wednesday the 27th, for fourth through sixth graders. Friends are always welcome, of course, to any of these things. And then finally... Also on the 27th, we have got Cozy Tozies. So maybe you can zoom in here, Bruce, on this tub. We'll have this tub out there. And this is an invitation for all ages to find a pair of socks that is kind of fun and wild and crazy. Um, write a little note of appreciation in and, and stick it in the sock. Um, and we're going to deliver these to uh, the health workers at the hospital. 
Um, so this is a great idea, a lot of fun, and uh, so be looking for those, those socks, and then you can um, drop them off at the church uh, that night of the, of the 27th. We'll have the tub out there. You could always drop it off ahead of time if you want. We'll make sure it gets where it needs to go. But uh, a lot of fun things planned for, uh, for education. Due to a technical glitch, uh, the remainder of the announcements will be by voiceover. Uh, today we need to remember in our prayers two of our own Living Waters members, uh, Todd Mulebauer on the death of his mother and Amy Stedgy on the death of her mother. Please keep them uh, close to your heart and in your prayers. Also, thank you to the musicians, singers, and technicians today, Janet Anderson, Kurt Gullickson, Dennis Larson, Wayne Anderson, and Bruce Neubauer, and also our two readers, Cindy Halgerson and Carrie Abfelter. Uh, we'll go start our service uh, with a short video in acknowledgement of tomorrow being set aside to honor the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. If, if just in case you missed the last Sunday's service, I thought, yeah, we should also say thank you to you, Pastor Bobby Bell, who is uh, stepping in and helping us out uh, a few weeks here. We really appreciate her help. So welcome and thank you, Bobby.
God's grace and mercy is so vast, complete, and infinite that God loves us even when we act or feel unlovable. Please join me uh, in a time of confession. You'll find the words on the screen. We are flawed and make mistakes. We are afraid. We react out of fear instead of respond with love. We are angry, which binds us in sin and darkness. We make our lives complicated and crowded. We fail. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that your creativity persists in transforming us throughout our lives. Help us to believe that the love of Jesus is stronger than our fears or our anger. And we ask you that the power of the Holy Spirit lift us above our trials and our pain. Take this moment of silence for your own time of reflection and confession. Now hear this good news. Gracious God, through the power of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, forgives you. Please take a moment to make the sign of the cross on your forehead to help you remember that you are a child of God. Forgiveness brings us peace, and it's good to share that peace with those around us. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. So share God's peace with those around you. Uh, and uh, if you are worshiping uh, there alone, peace be with you. So we are going to have our children now uh, cozy in to the uh, screen because it is time for the children's sermon. It's time for our children's sermon today. And I have something that is in my house that maybe you have in your house. It's a bag full of odd socks. The socks that come out of the laundry alone. They, they don't have their match or their mate. And I don't know about you, but I get really excited when I find the match to the sock. I was looking through and I found all these blue socks, and I thought, yay, they match, but they don't. They're not the same length, or they're not the same style. I have a lot of pink socks, but they don't go together, right? And, and this one's a short one, and this one doesn't have a top at all, and this one has a longer sock. And I don't want to wear those socks together, right? They just don't match up well. As I keep looking through these, I found a pair of the four blue socks. Two of them do actually match. They're the same length and they're the same stripe. I don't know if you can see that. And even though one has some holes in it, they still work better together than they do apart, right? So I get excited when I get a match because then they're gonna work be best together. That's the same way that Jesus feels when he's finding his disciples. When we find the match for a sock, we get excited because they're gonna work better together and they're going to do what they're meant to do. And when Jesus finds each of the disciples, he knows that they're going to work better together and be able to do the loving and the learning and the, the living that God wants them to do through Jesus' teaching. 
Jesus is going to love them and teach them. And, and Jesus gets excited when he finds each of those disciples because Jesus is the right match for each of us. Jesus is what makes us work best together. And to, to find what was lost or alone is exciting and is fun. And I love doing that. Now, sometimes things don't look like they're going to work well together. I don't even have a child who could wear a mitten this size anymore. And I really wish I could find another one of these because it's a really good mitten. Sometimes things don't look like they're going to work together, but they do with God's help. Sometimes all we need is what Jesus matches up with us. So it doesn't matter what we look like. If we're just all different kinds of socks, if we're all different, oh, another one. Um, still doesn't match any of the other ones. See, they, they're, they're socks everywhere. When, we, when Jesus finds us, then we have the ability to do what Jesus wants us to do and to be the best that we can be at what we're meant to do. I don't know if you can read this little tiny part on my sweatshirt says, was lost but now found. And it sh the, my picture shows all of these trees and, and the woods where we tend to get lost. We, we get lost. And sometimes we're alone in the middle of something that doesn't look like us. And sometimes we're in the middle of a whole bunch of people or places that we think we belong. But the best place we belong is when we are found by Jesus. And you have been found by Jesus. Jesus loves you. And I get excited when I think about how much Jesus loves you and how much Jesus works with us so that we can be the best we can be when we are found. So help your mom or dad match up socks this week and think about Jesus. And for, for the fire and ice um, group, uh, or for, for all of the children's group this month. Um, have your parents help you to buy a, a funny pair of socks or a cute pair of socks or a pair of socks that you would really like to get and then bring them to church with a note or a, or a picture that you've drawn to give to the workers up at the St. Cloud Hospital who are taking care of people who are sick. And when they look at the socks that you bring them, they'll know that you found them and that you saw them and that you love them. That will be an amazing way of working together with Jesus this week. Bring them to church by January, Wednesday, January 27th, and there'll be a big bin and let's fill that bin and a few more okay god bless you let's pray gracious god help us to think of you every time we put on our socks help us to know that you have found us and made the perfect match thank you for helping us to work better when we work with you together help us to remember those who need a little silliness or love this time, this week, this month, this year, and help us through your power to give them that, just with a pair of socks. Amen. A reading from Psalm 139. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book. 
and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into the future to prepare the way in, and in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, carefully, skillfully, shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created in me and to be before I came be me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I awake each morning, you are still with me. Here ends the reading. The boy Samuel was serving God under Eli's direction. This was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. One night, Eli was sound asleep. His eyesight was very bad. He could hardly see. It was well before dawn. The sanctuary lamp was still burning. Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God, where the chest of God rested. Then God called out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. Then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so he did. God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. I heard you call, here I am. Again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you, go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. It was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. God called again Samuel the third time. Yet again Samuel got up and went to Eli. Yes, I heard you call me. Here I am. That's when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls again, say, speak God. I'm your servant, ready to listen. Samuel returned to his bed. Then God came and stood before him exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak. I am your servant, ready to listen.
The Gospel for today, January 17th, 2021, is from the book of John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. In John's Gospel, Jesus' ministry begins with the call of disciples, who then bring others to Jesus. Philip's friend, Nathaniel, moves from skepticism to faith when he accepts the invitation to come and see. Here is the reading. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the gospel. We were lost, but now we are found. When we are lost, we are afraid. When we are afraid, we are lost. When we're separated from others, or even when we're in a crowd and we don't feel understood or seen, we want to be found. To be found is to be recognized, affirmed, and known. There are so many ways in which we feel lost or separated from each other. I won't presume to know what your personal causes for disconnect from others is about. It could be the obvious pandemic restrictions and physical separations that we are enduring. It could be the political divide that is emotionally disorienting. It could be addictions, grief, finances, or depression that causes us to disappear from sight and be lost. There are many sources or causes of being lost, and being lost often leads us to despair. I do know that like the lost sock in the children's sermon, we just don't function as well when we're alone or isolated. One of our very basic needs is to belong or simply put, be found. God created us to be in loving relationship with one another. That requires finding, discovering, and valuing each other. Have you ever been absolutely thrilled when something that's been lost has, is now found? I know I am. I get excited when I find that lost sock. 
You can only imagine my exuberance when I find something more significant, like a piece of jewelry or a special book. I want to tell the world. It's exciting to find something. By finding something, you impart value to that something or someone. Have you ever been the one that was lost and someone found you? To find someone and to be found is a profound relief and an exciting discovery. Imagine the joy of being able to find someone you thought was lost. Imagine the joy of finding you. Whether you are finding you or someone else is finding you. You've been found. I am eager to find and reconnect with others here. Our loving relationships will be affirmed. The gospel reading today is one version, and next week we hear another version, of how Jesus started calling his disciples. In verse 43, Jesus found Philip and said to him, follow me. In verse 45, Philip found Nathanael and tells him that they have found Jesus, son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth, the one that Moses and the prophets had written about. The idea that something is found implies that it was lost, or at least being looked for. Sometimes the lost item doesn't know it's lost. We can certainly understand the idea that Philip was lost without Jesus. He may not have known it. We are lost without Jesus. We can also understand Philip looking for and finding a friend to tell that they've found Jesus and they have been found. When we find something of value, we're eager to tell others. Finding Jesus was certainly finding something of great value. When we've found something, it is usually because we can now see it. When we find a path or a direction, we see the way to go, even if it means going through difficult times. A path through a wooden area can have a rough terrain and a lot of prickly undergrowth. There might be a marshy area where we get bogged down or a fallen tree we have to go around or over. Sometimes the brush is so thick and high that we can't see what is right in front of us. It's easy to lose our way on a path in those circumstances. We have to keep finding the way we're supposed to go. One way of finding our way in the wilderness is to look for and find the sun. Always look to the sun. Life is like that. We are trying to find our way through obstacles, distractions, and losses. Sometimes the best we can do is walk between the things over which we have no control. We are always trying to find our way. Sometimes we don't find something as much as something finds us. Many of the most significant scientific discoveries have been by accident. Scientists may suddenly find something that has been there all along but didn't see or recognize it before. The disciples, even though Philip says they have found the one for whom they were looking, still doesn't really see who Jesus is to them. They agree to follow him, and some of them could see that their life was taking a new and unexpected direction. The disciples didn't really recognize what finding Jesus or being found by Jesus would lead to. The treasure of the Messiah was not clearly seen. They had to find the Son of God. They had to keep looking for the Son of God. 
When we read about Jesus finding someone and telling them to follow him, that is the living word of God speaking to us. That is Jesus finding us. We are called as baptized members of the body of Christ to follow him. And we can see where following Jesus leads, more so than the disciples. When we follow the path of daily dying in our baptism, we are bound to Jesus' death and therefore also to his resurrection. Our sins are forgiven, and we can see more clearly the grace of God given to us. When we look to find the Son and the Son of God, we hope, we have hope. <laughs> we hope. Hope is stronger than the despair that separates us. We have hope in the gift of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. God's love is a more powerful connection than anything that threatens to separate us. When we keep looking to the Son of God, we are following the converging path of loving relationship together. We were lost, but now we are found. Jesus has found us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that even when we feel lost, we have been found. Please help us to live in the loving relationships for which you created us. Thank you for helping us to find and see the path of following Jesus, your Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your amazing grace. Amen.
if you have any prayers that you would like to be included in the prayers of the people and you are not um, going to be worshiping with us in person, please get those to me. And even if we, if you do come to worship in person, if you could still send those to me, uh, we're just trying to keep uh, contact at a minimum. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you call us to follow you and to share your good news. You are always looking for those of us who are lost. And we give thanks that you do look for us and that we are found. We pray today for our newest brother and sister in Christ to become co-workers with us in the body of Christ, Elijah Schoberg and Nadia Hyatt. Keep them um, in our prayers and strengthen their parents and all who love them in their baptismal vows. We pray for all who grieve. We know that you hold people lovingly in your arms and you wipe away their tears and you whisper encouraging words to them. Today we remember Todd Mubauer on the death of his mom, Judy Germanson on the death of her brother Jeff Melville, who was also connected with Living Waters. We pray for all who mourn the death of Amy Steggy's mom, and we pray for the Burdick family on the death of their daughter, Mallory. Be with them and hold them and bring a bit of your light into their dark days. We pray for Martin Luther King Jr. and the legacy that he, he left us. May we take that and be workers in the end of violence and division. Guard our hearts and our mouths to speak with love, your love, and give us the wisdom to know when to stay silent. And all of this according to your will. May we see all of our brothers and sisters as truly our brothers and sisters, and not just those who look like us. We pray for the Lutheran Youth Board and the challenges of youth in our synod and for the challenges youth throughout the world face. May they claim their baptismal promises and seek you out and to share the good news that you have given all of us. We pray for comfort and healing. We pray for Joan, the father of Reed Steggy, Claire and Paul. And we pray for continued healing and comfort to Chris Markford, who has now been moved to a care center put people in their lives to bring them comfort and hope and, and love. We give thanks for the good shepherd that you have, um, who guides us and, and brings us uh, to you. And in Jesus' name, we pray all of these things. Amen. Well, you don't have to go very far to, to hear messages of how divided we are, how different we are, but we come here to hear this message that here we are one, we are united, and uh, Jesus finds us all by his, by his love for us, and, and we are brought together by his body and his blood. And so we come together as one, remembering that the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words spoken to you, the body of Christ given to you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The gifts of God for the people of God. And now receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you into eternal life. Be now at peace. Amen. And now as you go on your way, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together our closing song, which is, You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. Sing along. peace serve the Lord thanks be to God